Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, welcome fellow masters. My name is Musaki, and today we're going to go over the most looked after tier list so far, the Dilcasters Archer tier list. Me and Tristan are going to rank all the archers currently out at this moment in FGO and A and JP. So, we're not going to waste any time, let's just jump into it. Oh. oh! Oh! shit! <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> ah! <laughs> I, I feel like we, this is this is also the time to preface, like, right now. This is an opinion. This is a yes. fact. Alright? So if we say something that you disagree with, sick. Awesome. Please be respectful. That we're not saying that this is the only tier list, and no other tier list matters. We're just saying this is our tier list. And that's why at the end of the video, I always say, hey, yo, what's your tier? So first up, Tristan, yeah. we're going to have Archer Yuri Pirates here. Archer yeah. Yuri Pirates. I'm going to go ahead and say, I think uh, B here for the Earth yeah. for Archer Yuri Pirates. They, they are indeed a B. Yeah. And nothing personal against them. Like, if it was, they would be lower because I got spooked by them a lot. But, you know, they do not a half bad job it's just they're literally in a sea of really good archers like at the time of the release they were a really really nice single target dps archer but as time has gone on she's kind of been overshadowed by essentially everything yeah pretty much so like the way that we like to look at it is b is where we put units where they're like one strengthening away from being good yep so like Yuri Pirates is like one look at from being all right. You can hang with with the rest of the crowd. Next Archer already right out the gate. Arash EX easy. Yeah, easy. No competition. One of the best farming archers in this game today. Like even in JP, you're gonna use Arash at the very least. He has a battery. There's not a single person who doesn't use a Rosh. Right. There's not a single person who does not use a Rosh. Mm. There's a reason he was he's grand class candidate. He's really, really good. Um, thank you, Demon Blade, for that sub. Thank you so much. But yeah, no, definitely a Rosh is EX tier regardless. You can get him MP5. He does so much damage. Bar and I can't can't argue with that. Next Archer Arjuna. This is this hurts me. It hurt me the last time we did this, and it hurts me now because I'm because you and me are like one of nine Arjuna fans. Right. Like, right. Within the world, we are one of nine Arjuna fans because everybody seems to hate him. Like I, I want him here. I want him I want him in A plus, but he's I like can't. not A plus. He's A. Like yeah. after all the all the buffs and strengthenings that he's gotten. And he's, he has some buffs that are, like, solely unique to him. Right. Like, his battery gets a buff that is unlike, really, any other battery buff that we've seen. But even with, like, all of that attention that he's gotten, he's gotten two skill strengthenings and an NP upgrade. And he's still kind of, like, lacks in a specific niche to excel in. It, it really does suck. Like his, uh, his Noble Phantasm having the fact that he can just instant kill divine enemies. Really good, by the way. But... It's just, he's just missing that thing that keeps him from being an A-plus tier. He is a great archer, just uh, not an A-plus. Next archer! Now, we're going to talk about... Speaking of A-plus! <laughs> an A-plus service! Segue, segue. Our oh, man, look how we did that. Yeah, I know. It, it worked out perfectly. The pen and teller, you'll never know. <laughs> Arturia Archer, an easy A-plus. She is very self-sufficient, can loop with very little effort. Um, again, probably the only thing she is missing on her own is probably maybe an increase in MP damage. When we talked about it, it was, uh, like, her MP damage is fine. Mm. Uh, but what we ended up discussing was her, uh, her, one of her skills getting a NP generation rating. Mm, that was it. To just make that a lot more consistent. Because she has the overcharge, which is a 20% at base NP refund. Right. But right. if she had, like, a... Uh, an NP generation rate, she would kind of have a little bit of everything in her kit. Right. 100%. She would just have it all. But she already has a lot to make her A-plus and super consistent. She's very good. 
And uh, if you ever if you ever have a chance to roll for her, somehow, somewhere, you never know, because DW is always throwing summer surveys randomly. Definitely do so. Next, Next Archer, Adelante. Now, if this is the Scotty system. I would easily put her in A plus, but it's just we're trying. To I mean, I mean, if we're talking Scotty system, she's e like EX. Right. She's like in that middle of EX A plus, depending on like who you talk to. Right. But on as without Scotty system, mm -hmm. just looking at the unit, she's an A. Yeah. Agreed. I wouldn't say she's A plus because she still has a lot of issues by herself. Um, but she's certainly not a B. Because right. she is, she does have a place, and she is good at that job. She mm -hmm. just needs help to get there, which is why I, I wouldn't put her in A plus. Yes, I because agree. if she if she can like do her job and she can do it properly, she does it well. Mm -hmm. But she needs a lot of help to get there. Definitely, hundred um, percent. Granted, she is one of the few servers that can give an AOE quick, which to this day not many can do that, which is pretty good. But again, she suffers like a lot of servers you'll see on this list from year one syndrome. They were really good in year one, but as the years have gone on, age has like not helped them in the fact that DW has gotten better when it comes to making these skills more unique, more powerful. I mean, we're going on our sixth year here, so it's a little rough. It's sense. kind of surprising that she does, hasn't gotten a little bit more look at, but yeah. you know. Apocrypha, they, you would think that They do the what they do, DW on some shit. Or but it we, is what it is. Or as we know now, Type Moon. Type Moon. Type Moon on its shit. And DW being like, okay, Dad. But still, A for Adelante. Next, Next Archer. Archer. Speaking of okay, Dad, Billy the Kid. Oh, A+. Plus. A+. Plus. We're yeah. about to see a theme. We're about to see a theme and a pattern, but don't worry about it. Billy the Kid is a very good three-star Archer. Quick crit. Like, even now, the crits and the damage that he can accumulate is very he is legitimately one skill strengthening away from just being, like, absurd. Because in one turn, he gives himself 130% crit damage up by himself. Just by himself. And he's a quick unit, by the way. Yeah, so Scotty, double Scotty. All right. He is just so good. And he's so consistent, too. Exactly. That, that's the key thing is, for A+, pluses, we try to look for the excellence, but how consistent your excellence is. As it happens, self-crit up in 50% battery is crazy. Yes. Right? You <laughs> the only thing he needs now is, like, on his first skill, which is the 120% crit damage up, if you gave that, like, star generation increase, or you made it, like, a crit bomb, oh. you made it, like, a fucking 30 bomb, EX. I put him in EX. He's just up there. Yeah. And as and as we'll see later, a, another certain archer. Mm. Next archer. One of the best teachers at FGO. Chiron. Another A plus. Yeah, another A plus. Boom. So easy. Chiron is very good. Does a lot. The fact that a lot of his skills are targetable are very good. So like, not only can he help the team and kind of like either support another DPS or be the main DPSs. Noble Phantasm also very good, and I think you mentioned this before. The Noble Phantasm, if you're going against a Castatoria, actually gets rid of the buff that she gives on a Noble Phantasm. Yeah, Chiron is one of the few Noble Phantasms that, before damage, it'll remove all defensive buffs, and this includes the Castatoria buff. And since it includes the Castatoria buff, that kind of hints that we may be fighting a Castatoria somewhere down the line. Maybe. Next Archer! David! A plus. Also an A plus. One of the few units that could give an AOE evade. Like, he's a three star. <laughs> like, tried and true, he's one of those units that you brought to Camelot to help you out, along with a couple other ones that we're gonna talk about. But. His niche is really niche. <laughs> yeah. As per the word niche, but it's also really nice. Outside of the niche, his NP isn't really anything to, to brag about. Yeah, they finally does, give him the giant trait. Yeah, they, they the giant trait happened, but um, skill wise, he's just a r really solid utility archer. Mm -hmm. He has a little bit of everything to help out the party. The fact that he's given to you for free after beating uh, Okeanos is yeah. incredible. So you, so least, you get you at least have MP one for sure. You, you well, I mean, one you just have MP one, but it's the fact that you are giving him. And the utility that he offers, both with an AoE cleanse, as well as an AoE heal, it's not great, but it's still something. 
as well as an AoE Evade, and he has a Charisma, which isn't also anything to scoff at, because it is Charisma B, so... Okay, that's the score for David. Mass Archer! David. We got Emia Alter. MP hits really hard. His MP is, like, the entire reason he's... I would consider him an A+, plus, but yeah. he's not an A+, plus because of the rest of his skills. Yeah, he's really drugged down. That's unfortunate. It's really like his, his NP is so strong. Mm -hmm. It is so strong. Bar none. Really tough. But, like, the rest of his kit just fucking sucks. <laughs> like, he needs, he, this boy needs some help. He needs some help. <laughs> he needs help some help. help. He needs some milk! <laughs> Get that boy some milk! <laughs> oh, no, but that's what he needs. Thank you so much, Kevin Dub, for being a channel member. Much appreciated, my dude. Much appreciated. He's like, uh, the way that I picture Demia, right? Mm. Is he like, he like pulls the pin on a grenade, chucks the grenade. Like, if somebody dies, somebody dies, but like, there's still like the rest of the battlefield going on, and he like, Slaps his cape and he's like, My job here is done. And then the people nearby are like, But you didn't do anything, my job here is done. Mass Archer! Let's go. Emia, A. Plus. Yeah, A. Plus. That, yeah. That's about fair. Yep. I mean, I wanna. Like, the, the man gets two. <laughs> the man gets two buffs to his, uh, his uh, main projection skill. And now he's one of very, very, very few units. That actually can change his noble phantasm card type. Now, it's not as is super he... versatile as Space Ishtar, but it does that. If up. he had some kind of battery, he would be EX. Because, mm -hmm. like, Emiya is used for farming. The fact that you can change for one turn his MP to arts allows him to kind of pseudo loop. Mm -hmm. But if you want to just use Emiya and you don't want to try to have a backup waiver or lead with a rash, mm -hmm. then he's kind of inconsistent. And by kinda, I mean he's inconsistent because of just the scaling that happens to go in with arts and the fact that he his uh, steroid isn't the best steroid. Uh, uh, but outside of that, he hits hard. And on top of that too, the fact that he is um, a tutorial role unit, that you can get him the four star in a tutorial role, you have a high chance of getting him and he just carries you from the wow plus being a year one survey he has very low like the map that he requires isn't the craziest it's kind of weird that like they try they buffed his mp to be able to swap to to arts for one turn right. but he's much better in my opinion as a crit unit mass archer uriel a plus a plus very... oh man we're about that we're, we're about to have a fucking theme right here <laughs> like uriel literally <laughs> carried me <laughs> through camelot I'm like, listen, Uriel is about free to play friendly as you can get. Like, literally, the four, like the five star version of her, which is later in this list, which I don't know. Where are you? Why are you over there? Anyway, she's that, but she's a three star. So you have more copies of her, so the higher MP level. Like her stills are actually pretty good. Her damage, as Tristan pointed out to me, does the <laughs> most damage at MP1. At and, MP1. And all the MP levels after that just affect the extra damage to males. Right. So for those of you who don't know, Uriel is one of two units in the one of technically three units in the game that has special scaling on their noble phantasm. Where Uriel's is at N her NP damage is static throughout all levels. It will always do 900 to 1200 percent single target damage based off if you upgrade it or not. Mm -hmm. So if you have it unupgraded, it's 900 percent single target damage, right? The highest scaling that as a three star she can get to. Mm -hmm. Um, if you rank it up, it is then 1200 percent single target damage. To put that into perspective, at NP one, at all levels, at like, you know, for a single target unit. At all times, she will be doing the maximum amount of damage because of just this special scaling that she has. Mm. Uh, and then the further MP levels actually affects the bonus damage she has towards males. Is she had it? an attack up to be able to scale multiplicatively with the arts up that she gives herself, and then had like some. And, and if her battery wasn't the weird type of vampirism that she yeah, has, then then that? then I would say, hey yo, ex. But she, you know, 
can get worked on. Mm. She needs to get worked on, please. DW. You have some help. Max, Max Archer. Archer! The king of heroes. Oh, EX. EX. Oh, EX. Easy EX. I don't think- Alright, if you don't think Gilgamesh is EX, you're crazy. Like, he is the very first limited archer. He's had so many rate-ups, he's only had a couple of upgrades, and those upgrades actually were significant. One, the MP damage has increased, and the second was his third skill, which turned into a 30% battery. Now, all of a sudden, he's just as good as he can be. Like. The fact that he his noble phantasm has a trait that other servants are weak to. About 98, 99% of the servants <laughs> in the game are this weak game to is, this. Been, this game is going on for its sixth year. And ever since year one, when this motherfucker was added, they created a special trait just for him. Him and Castergill have the highest. Oh yeah, they, they are like the... They are the two units in this game that have the single highest AoE attack up like out of every unit, just those two, being at 21% because they both have A+. And that's raw damage. It's not and like that's, any that's... sort of specialty or anything, but just like, hey, regular attack up, 21%. Generally is 20. And you may think 1% may not add up too much. Yes, it does. It, it, it kind of it kind of does. Adds it, up. To go back to that Noble Phantasm, it may be AoE, but due to the fact that after the strengthening, he gets a 30% NP damage up before activation, he has that 21% Charisma, and the Enema Ailish uh, weak trait that happens, mm -hmm. he does significant single target damage on his AoE NP. His numbers are big. <laughs> his number go big. Mass Archer! We got... Can I, like, not? I don't... Can we can I can we not and say we did? Sorry. I don't want to do this again. Uh, don't we gotta go through this. This is the third time you're making me <laughs> No <laughs> Sorry. Like I, I love we her. we at the Caddy Heroes love ourselves some Altera, so we want her to be A plus EX tier, but she is just A, which isn't bad! Still good. But you know, A plus A. We want her an A plus, but she's an A. She's in the sky system, she's a very good unit. Just DPS slaying destruction. Good. On her own, she's not bad. It's just look at the competition she has to deal with. <laughs> right, it's like it's like she's not she's not bad. She's she's rather good, but she's not great, mm -hmm. you know? That's... <sighs> and that that's kinda that's kinda where the, e, the the A pluses are, right? Mm -hmm. She just, she needs something. She fucking needs something. It'd be really nice if she could get that something. Cause like, outside, cause she, she suffers from the Demia issue, right? Mm. You use that Noble Phantasm, then what? Right. <sighs> Poor Altera, but don't worry. You'll have some company soon. Max Archer! Archer! Fujino, I don't A plus. Uh. Yeah. She has a lot. She has going a lot going on. for her. Fujino is one of those weird cases where you're actually fine with NP1 because her skills just kind of make up for it. Her skills are strong. Right. Her skills are fucking strong for a four star. But what, what else will push her into that EX tier? Your I think it was a battery. Yeah. Right? A battery right. or a way to like increase NP generation, right? Because her hit counts aren't that bad. Mm hmm. And she's kind of self-sufficient with the the three-turn and uh, sure hit. She has the guts. She has the damage cut. It's a hefty damage cut. It is a three-turn 2K damage cut. It is strong. Yeah. Um, and then her her steroid is also really strong with that MP damage up and that buster up. But I'm pretty sure a battery would just and please another radar. Like, for yeah, the love of another, God. Another raid up would be nice. Mass Archer! Ishtar EX. That's about right. Very good, very strong unit. Makes farming, for especially Buster type farming, just very easy. She's one of the. She, she was really strong in terms of, like, AoE damage before her buff. Mm. Like, she was really strong. And then they buffed her NP, gave it. Uh, the ability to drop crit stars after use, 
Like, she is, she is, like, at the pinnacle of what it looks like to take a fucking, like, chisel and just fucking jackhammer it into a wall and just watch it crack. Not to mention she has uh, a really, really strong charisma with the 20% attack up, the 20%, 20 to 30% uh, crit damage up. She has that battery well, and then the 50% you know. mana burst. Now, on the surface, most people would look at that and be like, oh, but it happens on the next turn. Why would I care? Well... Here's the thing, 90% of this goddamn player base has a waiver and an arash. So what you're what you're essentially going to do, right, is blow the shit up in the first wave, then use a 50% uh, battery that Ishtar has on the second wave with a 50 bomb CE to nuke the second wave while you have her skills popped so that the third wave she has everything and then just kind of double waver it, right? You kind of just no-brain it, and you just go, <gasps> She's a nuclear easy-bake oven. That is the most accurate description of Ishtar I think I've heard in the fucking six years this game has been out. Very good. Next, Next Archer! Yeah. We got Kogil. Oh, Kogil is a solid A. a. Yeah, solid. He is a solid A. Mm -hmm. Very good, but you can solo- Look at you! <laughs> Nothing. Just look at look at him. Look at you, Kogil. You go. You dance, Sava Ping. <laughs> you dance, Boo Boo. Fucking this little shithead can solo Mordred in Camelot. Boom. There you go. Plus, like he inherits a lot of those hits. While the hits are lower than his original counterpart, it's still pretty significant. Like even a younger Gilgamesh is still very good. <laughs> I'm so glad the Gilga laugh works, because that's actually accurate. Oh, man. If he gets a, if he gets a buff, I, w I would, I would say A+. Plus. But Easy. like, as he is now, as he is now, he's fairly straightforward, fairly standard, year one as fuck. Yep, you're uh, but but that surprisingly doesn't hold him back. No, you know he still does what he needs to do. Still kind of like shits on things. But if he gets a buff, he's kind of a plus. IMO. Mass Archer, which is a little bit controversial because you can a little controversial because you cannot get, get this unit anymore. But, but... Chloe's ex. She's kind of here. Chloe Von Eidsberg. She's kind of broke. Is a little right, broke. She's kind of. She's kind of broke. Free to play five star MP5 with a 50% battery with a th a three buffs to car performance for a turn on top of an evade, which is also crit damage. Dude, she has a 50% battery as a single target unit. She has a three-turn crit damage up. Her, her, you know, steroid isn't the strongest, but, but this little shithead, this little Ilya shithead clone, on a noble phantasm, arts brave chain because of her third skill. Her third skill is a three-turn, 100% crit star generation increase. Yeah. And because her arts cards hit six times, this little shithead can create 50 stars off of an arts brave chain. It's insane. Who does that? Please. Why? Why? Because she's a troll. Like, why? why? Why is this allowed? You you use this third skill for the 50 battery, but then you don't really pay attention to the fact that it gives a 100% star generation increase, and her arts cards hit six times. She can just, like, why? Why does this, how does this work? And for a while, her strength was higher than, than Emiya, which is a damn shame. Which is a damn shame! Because <laughs> when Chloe came out at the time, Emiya was way weaker than Chloe. It didn't make no damn sense. Mass Archer! Oh, uh, this uh, is about to be controversial as fuck. Uh, a plus. Oh, A. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I want to put an A plus, but it's A. This is controversial as fuck. Again, opinion, we believe she's A. Because we believe she's A. the niche is good. Divine and writing. If she has those, she's doing way more damage, and that's excellent. One of the major issues with Nobu, right, is that niche that she has, which is anti-divine, anti-writing. Mm -hmm. And in that niche, she's 
one of the hardest hitting units in the game. Mm -hmm. She's like tied with Napoleon and Gilgamesh for that mm -hmm. when they're in their niche, which is mm -hmm. not bad company to have at all. Nope. But outside of that niche, right? Looking at the rest of her kit, she kind of only has two skills, right? If you're not facing Divine, her second skill is dead. Her second skill has no use and there's no point in using it. So you only have the first skill and the third skill. And the first skill's a really middling NP generation increase. So if you don't even use that at all, you kind of only have her third skill, which is a crit damage up. She doesn't really have anything else to help her. And her NP hasn't been strengthened at all. So she's still working off of year one scaling. Damn Does any of this really matter if she's in her niche? No, but looking at her objectively without the niche, like pushing her up there, she needs help. She needs a lot of help. She needs a lot of work. Mass Archer! We're gonna talk about Orion and not the super variant. Artemis. She's an A. Yes, she is an A. We'll agree with that. She is year one as fuck, but in her niche against males, very, very good. If you have her, great single target DPS. Like, honestly, good. But she needs a lot of extra help to kind of keep up with, like, with all... Nothing she does is, like, A-plus exceptional. She it's it's really, really weird mm -hmm. that, like, the three-star Uriel gets an NP strengthening. The five-star Artemis gets an NP strengthening. But one of the major issues with this is that Uriel actually has a kit that allows her to kind of work off of this more, while Artemis slash Orion has kind of that Nobu issue, where the right. second skill is where the niche comes in. It's not tied to the Noble Phantasm, which if it was tied to the Noble Phantasm, that would open up the kit more. But because of that, it's kind of a dead, a dead skill if you want to just use her as like a primary DPS, which right. is an issue. Sure, and that's unfortunate. Still good, just not A plus, and that's fine. And that's fine. But next up, we got Robin Hood. Robin Hood, A, a plus. plus. Oh man, I'm seeing a trend. Oh shit. Yeah, like pretty much all the only three star archer so far in A is Kogil, but everyone else is like yeah, A plus. They're really good. The three-star archers are just very good regardless. Like, it's just, it's just kind of, kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, Robin Hood is very, like, straightforward. He's just very straightforward. There's nothing difficult about Robin Hood. He can actually But he, niche. like, but he, like, really excels in that super basic shit that he does. And it's super easy to get off that niche that he has because he applies it himself. Right. It's not some kind of targeted niche that kind of holds Nobu back or holds Artemis back or holds other units back, right? Mm -hmm. It's the fact that he can just apply poison and then he has that overcharge damage, right? right? Just to do that, which is really good, which is really incredible. Um... The fact that for a time, he was also the single highest DPS unit in the game. Yeah. Mm, that's, that was insane when I saw the math on that. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> for a three star? Yeah, my team for a while was like, Uriel, David, Robin Hood, Mosh, and Camelot. That was what I brought. I'm like, all right. And a waiver, support waiver. Like, let's go. Just come on. And go. <laughs> and go. Like, all right, there's Gawain. Get him. <laughs> Mass Archer. We got Tawara Tota. He's an A. He's an A. He's an A. Not bad. He's, like, yeah. He gets a bad rap for, like, whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves to just, like, write him off. But he's not actually bad. Mm -hmm. Like, 100%. he's Archer Koo. He's yes. not as strong as Koo. He doesn't have as many survivability options as Ku, but he's one of the very few servants in this game that has an evade with no turn limit. He's one of the very few units in this game that has a party-wide max HP up, which increases survivability. He has a three-turn uh, steroid that's also a heal. He's not actually that bad. Mm -hmm. 
He's actually pretty solid as a unit. Does he excel? No. Hence why he's not A+. Plus, mm -hmm. right? right? But he is A and he is kind of strong. Max Archer! Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> this unit fucking sucks! The worst. Oh my god, this unit sucks! <laughs> Archer Helena, the worst Archer. Probably up there with one of, one the, of the worst, worst units in the game. In game. <laughs> like... Alright, you can you can talk about how there are no bad units in this game. It's just nobody knowing how to use No. She's just bad. You can She's... use her. Go ahead! She, she's just bad. She actively makes your job harder. She's an AoE art servant. Yes. That should be a plus, because that means that she should be able to loot. Mm -hmm. Except she can't, because this f fucking stupid-ass unit has a sub-40%, uh, a sub-0.40 uh, NP charge rate. Which, for those of you who don't know, is why Abigail's charge rate sucks ass, and why Tomomo sucks ass outside of a brave chain, right? Mm -hmm. It's why these units don't really excel well because their hit counts are so high that the devs are like, oh, we need to compensate by making their NP gain rates lower. But it doesn't always check out because math is kind of fucking dumb. Yeah. And so this stupid unit has one of, the, I think one of the worst skills I've seen in this game just ever. This second skill, for those of you who don't know, is just a damage increase, not a like attack up, like a charisma or a monstrous strength or a bravery, no. I'm talking about a 1k to 2k damage increase for 5 hits. This skill sucks. Pretty bad. This skill is so bad. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Max, Max Archer. Archer! James Moriarty and guys, oh. really quick. Honestly, before this buff that he's about to get in about less than a month, I have my boy Moriarty on a beat. With this buff that he's going to get in the Caldeo Boys event that will be in the first week of March. A plus. This man's an A plus. A plus. This, is, a plus. this a man plus. is an A plus. A plus. A plus. A plus. Because yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we all know the skill that he has, which is his battery skill, but it's locked behind having a certain amount of crit stars, which kind of sucks unless you have the CE 2030 or you get a lot of crit stars. But not only does this buff lower the cooldown and take away the restriction it also applies the evil trait to everyone in the front party which leads to his charisma skill which gives extra damage if you're evil to put that into perspective that is now a 40 percent attack up he is applying to the entire party for three turns Crazy. it is it is fucking dumb and because of that he now has a, he now serves two purposes as this kind of pseudo buffer as well as this super explosive DPS unit that he is. Because this jackass on his overcharge applies a defense down before damage, and this jackass does 12 hits on his MP, which equals to some of the highest DPS. Sabadashi! <laughs> this jackass! Oh my god! My god. Max, Max Archer! We're gonna talk about Nikola Tesla! A plus! Yep, adding it to the A plus. This motherfucker! The modern day Zeus! Awesome. Raining down thunder! He about to beat your ass! He about to give you the glove! We Southampton! Without all those buffs, he was like a B. Yep. You know? But like, as the buffs kept stacking and stacking, like buffs should do, they elevated where he was, and now with all three of those buffs that he's gotten, he's just really good. He is really good this jackass has a 50 percent battery on the skill that we all know and love pioneer of the stars three turn in Vaughn pierce 10 crit stars 50 percent battery so good and then his first skill is also really really good it is really really good because beforehand it used to just be oh i give myself three turns of np generation increase now it's a party wide, not 50%, but like he gives himself 50% and then party wide NP generation increase. So he has a sort of pseudo uh, utility in that in that regard, where he helps out the rest of the crew. Mm. And then his second skill, which was natural born genius, got a buff and a pretty hefty fucking buff at that. Now it's also a flat guaranteed 20% attack up on top of the 30% NP damage up 
But on top of that, the MP damage up got a duration increase to three fucking turns! So this jackass can run a double waiver comp and just nuke your ass twice for maximum damage instead of just a one-off! Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They say lightning doesn't strike twice, but what about Tesla? The god of lightning. That rule does not apply. Who decided that? Who <laughs> decided that? <laughs> Max Archer! We're gonna talk about Tristan. Not the guru Tristan. But Tristan. He's a B. He is a I bee. like him. I, I, I would like hope him. you like yourself, Tristan. I love the way he looks. I love the cape. I love the bow. I love his, his design. But kit-wise, he only has one really good skill. He only has one really, 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 really good skill. But the rest of the skills are kind of meh. He has the the same evade, uh, AoE evade that David has, but David has it as a, at a higher rank. So the HP uh, that he heals is higher by 200. But like most people, Tristan gets looked at solely for his battery, and they immediately go, No, I don't like that, because he has a 50% battery, but he... NP seals himself the moment he uses it, which also really sucks because a really strong part of his kit is his third skill and his MP because his MP got a buff to ignore defense buffs. Really, and good. that's really strong. That is really strong, especially on a single target multi hit MP. And his third skill is one of the few skills in the game that just flat out removes buffs on the enemy. It's not a certain type of buff. No, it's you target this enemy and say, yeah. fuck you in particular. There's a couple of other servers that can do that, but he's a four star that can do that. Granted, there could be more. That's just off the top of our head because that skill's rare. Mass Archer! Tomoe goes in the very loyal waifu. Oh She's an God. A. <coughs> She's an A. Oh, man. Ugh. My my bias is put her in EX because she's loyal and she's one of the only units in this goddamn game that doesn't fall in love with you and actually stays loyal because we don't, uh, you know, yeah. accept NTR here. Yeah, no. She's, you know? Yeah. So, so in terms of integrity, she's EX, but in terms of unit, she's A. And a good A at that. Like, she's she's gotten better, especially with the buffs that are coming later on for her. She She gets even better. Um, the only thing I want for her, personally, for me to get her in an A+, is let her trigger her own, like, niche. Like, I had a lot of issues with that, too. Mm -hmm. Like, right I, don't, I don't like that. Yeah, because we even talked about it in a video earlier, like, when we were going over the banner for Shimosa, a test series that most of y'all didn't watch, so we stopped that. But, uh, Robin Hood, he can trigger off his poison himself. Now, imagine if... Tomoe can trigger off her own burns, like boom. Now all of a sudden, her she's self-sufficient with her kit. She's not relying on someone else to get burns. Granted, if you have command code, you can do that, but we're trying to look at the unit by themselves, what they have. Because obviously, command codes are nice. Command codes are supplementary tools in order to yeah. boost the servant instead of, you know, make the servant good. Mm -hmm. Mass Archer! Napoleon! A plus. A plus. That a is, plus. That's going to be your permanent gotcha solution. If you don't have Gilgamesh, Napoleon is the, probably the next one you're going to get. Really, really he good is, unit, especially with the He boss. is so strong. Mm -hmm. His NP is strong. His skills are strong. They buffed his NP. Like, I mentioned earlier that in her niche, Nobu is only challenged by Napoleon and Gilgamesh in their niche. And that's because this jackass gets an NP strengthening. And this jackass, on top of his NP strengthening, has a kit that is fully suited to nuking the shit out of whatever wave is in front of him. Has a three turn charisma, 20%, but on top of that, it also gives himself a further flat 20% attack up. So in one turn, he gives himself 40% attack up. He gives himself a 10 to 20% NP damage up, which is party wide as well but it also increases star generation rate by 50 percent to 100 percent and he has a 30 percent battery a three turn uh 10 star regen and he applies uh invincibility ignoration for three turns on top of that his np ignores all defense buffs right well no it's not sorry it ignores a defense buffs not all defense buffs so right. stuff like artoria's uh special involve he won't be able to pierce 
But everything besides that, he will do the maximum amount of damage possible. It doesn't matter what you do, this jackass is going to hit you, and his bright ass smile is going to be behind that cannon as you get incinerated to the seventh degree. Upon every disintegrating though. Mass Archer! John Archer, yeah, that's an A plus from me. Yeah. She is good at what a she A lot does. of people are going to be mad at that, but A plus. Yeah, she's not an EX because she's really good at what she does, which is arch looping. She was built to do that. And I would hope a unit built to do the thing they're really good at excels at it. Um, but I wouldn't say like it's that EX tier. She is good for what she does, and obviously Castatoria is going to make her even better. There are better options, of course, but if you have her, there you go. Still good. A plus is a good tier, guys. Good shit. Look, this is good company to be around. <laughs> my my like major issue with her kind of comes into like what she needs in order to succeed. You know, yeah. like we put Adelante in A because without the Scotty system, that's kind of where she is, right? Without the team that John Archer needs in order to succeed, she's A plus, right? And that team is a team that I don't like because it's so it's so much investment to get this looping done, right? Like that that waiver, Tomamo, Nero Bride, and Paracelsus. You have to have all of these units, and you have to have them leveled and skilled in order to consistently do this. And so without that team, she's kind of here, right? Which is good, which is really solid because her kit is incredibly strong and incredibly solid. And I hate 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 when dw does their stupid oh you have to be on a waterfront in order to get the full effects of this skill eat my ass suck my toe oh! like if you're gonna do that at least make it so that the person can actually trigger the effect themselves like the way they did that and boom it's a lot better because they can trigger his own effect mass archer will you tell a plus a plus all right so for those of you who don't know all right this certain unit not out yet, but he's coming soon, so... William Tell is the hottest shit. He is, he is incredible, and he is part of a trio, right? You have... Think, think of My Hero Academia, right? And you know that scene that is called the Big Three of, 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 the, 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 of the university, right? You have Robin Hood, William Tell, and Paris, and, and Paris right? As, like... The premier welfare, like free to play, single target DPS that are some of the best DPS units in this game. Like Moo didn't want to put him in A plus until I mentioned that his first skill is a thirty crit star bomb. Correct. He completely is self sufficient in giving himself stars, giving himself star weight, giving himself a star uh, a crit damage up, giving himself an arts up. His NP is a single target that has incredible scaling. It ignores evasion. It does extra damage to enemies that have evade up. Really, he does a lot. Really strong. He does so much. Like to put it into perspective, right? Robin Hood is sushi. Really precise. Really pristine. He is. He. He is this. Everything is perfect. Everything is really easy and simple to to make. But if one thing is fucked up. The poison goes off too late, poison goes off too early, you don't have the, the proper NP charge, you don't have the proper, right? Just like how with sushi, if the, the rice is too sweet, the fish has been out for too long, then the sushi is just bad. That is Robin. William Tell isn't just defined by his Noble Phantasm, he's defined by his skills. He's more equivalent to like Korean barbecue, where like the meat of Korean barbecue you have to prepare yourself is the Noble Phantasm. But then you have all of the side dish that like you have your pickled fruits and you have your sauces and you have your side meats that you can sizzle and and make alongside right you have all of these little things that just come in together to make the meal and make the dish that completes william tell right that that is how i view these units <laughs> just making me hungry does that make archer artoria borger yes <laughs> Mass Archer! We got a boy. Asfasama. A plus. He is like on the precipice of ascension. So good. Yes, yes, he is a divine servant, but that's not what I'm getting at. I'm talking like he is the littlest, the littlest bit from being EX. 
He just needs a way to guarantee some kind of increase to his NP damage. Like, if he has a way to lower his, his HP value... Like, like so that Hijikata. He, yeah, like Hijikata, he's EX, guaranteed. His skills are amazing. His skills literally elevates his neutral play. He's one of the only units that I feel has, like, the strongest neutral game. Just, like, face cards? So Boom. That's all I need. Face yeah. cards? Oh, dude, that's all I need. I to, uh, Buster cards? Dude, I crit more. Quick cards? Oh, I lower defense. Right, and it all just builds into each other with the Noble Phantasm. Again, if you got his back against the wall, he's gonna do more damage with Warrior. Call an ambulance, but not, not for me! <laughs> Next Archer. Archer! We got Paris. You see a the plus. theme here. A plus. A plus. <laughs> so many good archers, it's kinda hard. <laughs> he is the he is the the trio de distance of fucking Robin Hood and William Tell. These three uh kinda create this trifecta of single target. Like I'm gonna fucking annihilate you. Damage. Mm -hmm. We have we have a really interesting damage uh, multiplier in this game, which is special damage. You either have additive or multiplicative. To put it into perspective, a rash has a da a percentage damage increase as his overcharge for special damage, but that's additive and not multiplicative. And he does the shit that he does with additive damage. Magical. Right? <laughs> Robin Hood, Paris, and William Tell have multiplicative damage. Granted, Arash also has single target scaling on an AoE Noble Phantasm, but that's besides sure. the point. Paris is held back by his stats and why I don't feel he's EX because he does have a way to apply his niche. The only issue is that the enemy needs to have buffs on them. He just needs a little bit of extra, like, you know, cherries on the top in order to make him pristine. Mass Archer! Osaka Behime Archer. It's about a good A. Not to say that she's bad, because she has some things about her that she does very well, especially with the Noble Phantasm. Uh, it's just that her skills are just it's all over the place. She's not really focused. Right. Um, she also is like, the one thing that I hate, which is, hey, yo, three times for three turns. Oh, man, I'm so good. Look at me go. She has the issue of being a triple arts uh, card going into a Buster Noble Phantasm. And her Buster Noble Phantasm hits like a wet noodle, even with the, uh, the, buff, yeah. the steroids that she has. But you kind of don't really use her for the damage on the MP. You kind of use it for the overcharge, which is kind of really sad because that's the same reason you would use original Osaka Behime. And there are just better, more consistent options to get those effects. That's not to say that she's not usable. She's 100% usable. She can do what she needs. But there are just better options that just kind of really hamper her. It's like you yes. just kneecap her, right? Just, and now she can't walk. Yep, unfortunate. Mass Archer! Calamity Jane! Smart one. I, forgot I think we put her, her I think we put her in A. I'm pretty sure we put her in A, yeah. I wanna say we put her in A too, and it's not for nothing, because she actually is a good unit. Like, um, I just feel I'm, like I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of like why. It had to do with her third skill that we wanted to put her in A plus. But it had to do with the fact that she had no way of like guaranteeing the effects on yes, those there it is. on she that skill. She needed a crit bomb. If she had she a crit needed bomb. a she needed a crit bomb to be able to uh to sync with her her kit more because by herself the effects are nice, but by herself she can't get those crit stars. And so if she had a way to use like the full effect of that skill, easy A plus. But she doesn't have like that instant like crit bomb that she would need in order to get the maximum usage out of that skill right. because the times that you're going to get the maximum usage of that skill is very low and not off it's nice when it happens but the fact that you can't have it happen enough times for it to be relevant it, it really hurts and so the skill is kind of middling because of it that's not that she say that she's bad because her NP is really potent. Yes. The fact that it reduces quick resistance and defense, that's really good, but you know. Uh, uh. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Mass Archer! Mary Poppins, y'all! 
Archer Nightingale. A plus. Okay. With everything that she does, especially as a welfare, yes. the fact that you can just get her, right? She has an AOE D, uh, buff removal. It only removes one buff, but it is an AOE one buff removal. She removes one debuff from the party, and it is an AOE 3k heal on one skill, right? She has a targetable guts. It is also a buff removal resistance and an NP damage up for three turns. And she has a 20% attack up and 30% crit damage up party wide for three turns. She has a lot going for her. Can she loop? No, not consistently. It's a little difficult. Little difficult. But what she brings to the table in terms of support and like off AoE damage is really strong. Deserving of that spot. They skip our, our good boy. We're gonna go to next Archer. Next, next Archer. Zoomer. Zoomer. She's A. Yeah. Pepe hands. You're an A. Oh man. Dude. No. Maka S. Maka, Maka S. S. Now I know you wanted an A plus EX, but you know, you know, it feels weird, man. To be like that. Zuber, it, 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 it kind of do be like that. Zuber, kind of sad. Here. I think she's the perfect example of like get overshadowed by just an absolute fucking tidal wave of really good archers. Yeah. Because she doesn't have anything that allows her to stand out. Like she, her first skill is super strong, right? Twenty percent party wide attack up, ten percent party wide NP charge for three turns, one k uh, HP regen for three turns. Yeah, just awesome. a really strong skill. Her third skill is a is a nice steroid, right? Twenty percent battery, thirty percent quick damage, uh, quick uh, face card up, as well as a ten ten star bomb. She has a passive that increases her crit damage on her quick cards. She has a passive that increases her star weight on her quick cards. Really nice, but like her noble phantasm is kind of really middling. Feels bad, man. Say it's Shogunans is a Twitter call out post. To, to a Twitter Mirasaki call out Shikibu. post to Murasaki Shikibu. Like, I'm about to cancel you, Murasaki. I'm about to cancel you, Murasaki. Who are you again? <laughs> Mass Archer! Archer. Ilya's Field von Einsberg. A plus. A plus. A plus. Very good, Archer. She's fucking strong! Real talk, she's good. She's just a good unit. She does what she does very well. Um, and she's honestly one of the reasons why you should roll for that Summer 5 sub, uh, Summer Banner when it comes out. Keep an eye on that. Mass Archer! Noble Katsu Oda. Now, this one's a weird one. I, I know exactly what we said with this. So, real talk. I originally had Noble Katsu at like D or C. This is the first draft of this tier list. Yeah, after the first draft. After talking with Tristan. He said, bare minimal, as he does his job as an archer. Gotta be like a B, solid B. But, when it comes to supporting his big sister, Oda Nobunaga, he's like an EX. Cause, and that's the thing, his whole job is to make Nobu better. Like, that is his job. Nobu Phantasm, you don't really want to proc that. You really just want to use him for, for the skills. It's for his skills to make Nobu better. Does Nobu need some stuff? Yes. He is not a replacement for skill upgrades, but he is a very welcome support as tailor made for just Nobus. And so he has the, the rank of Nobu fanboy, and that's his rank. Because yeah, his, his ranking is Nobu fanboy. Nobu fanboy. Mass Archer! You guys see it. You already know what down there. Superhuman Orion. The last pick. I say it for last. Yeah, she already know what it is, kids. Yeah, you already know. EX. EX. Easy EX. Literally, when you can get 90% of your Noble Phantasm off of what? A one art card? <laughs> what? <laughs> This man's can hit half a million crit damage on disadvantage! It's crazy. I don't put him EX because of that. Mm. I put him EX because he's a womanizer. Yeah. 100%. He has straight eyes. Yeah. 100%. He's a pervert. He's a piece of shit. He's debaucherous. He's a degenerate. But at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, from the bottom of his goddamn fucking heart, 
he loves Artemis. And he will do whatever it fucking takes to make her happy. Even if it physically kills him. Skill speaks for himself, power speaks for himself, lore speaks for himself. Really good. One of the best. And that's our Archer tier list. Look at that! We put so many more EXs on this list, guys! We put <laughs> we put four more in there! Yeah! That's a market improvement. That's a 400% increase! Game stocks, stonks! We're, we're going up like game stock! Oh my god. Dude, I wish, man. I, I, I came in on that too late. Guys, that is the Archer tier list. What do you guys think? I want to know what you guys think of this tier list and what is your own tier list? I'm gonna go ahead and put the link in the description. And again, for those watching, you're gonna get a link right away to make your own tier list and share that around. Um, if you haven't already, join the Discord. We, uh, we hang out there all the time. Just click the link in the description, read the rules, come hang out, love to see you there. And hey, we got Lancer tier lists coming up. Now, I know there's a lot of people who like a certain Lancer out there. So if you don't wanna miss that, Go ahead, hit the subscribe button down below, and ring the bell, please, so you're notified when we upload next. You'd be surprised, about 70% of you guys are not subscribed, so if you see that, you should probably subscribe by now. It helps me a lot, and it's free. Anyhow, my name is Musaki from the County of Gurus, and I'm sitting here with Tristan, and we are logging out. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Eh, 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 eh. Ba 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 ba